Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I've been feeling a little bit parched lately because we have not had much of any Gunpla news to talk about. Thankfully though, Dengeki Hobby came in to save the day with a whole bunch of new snap-built image galleries for some upcoming Gundam model kits. I'm ready to see some new Gunpla. I know you guys are ready to see some new Gunpla, so I'm not going to waste any more time at all and just dive right in with the Master Grade Gundam Alex 2.0. This kit is coming out later this month, and I gotta say, this thing just looks absolutely amazing. So first off, we got some box art, and this isn't really part of the whole Dengeki Hobby gallery thing, but it's new. Wanted to show it to you guys because it looks pretty awesome. Probably the single most iconic thing the Gundam Alex ever did was fight the Zaku 2 Kai to the death, and yeah, it's just a cool piece of art. Master grade box art never disappoints. Now for the model kit itself, this thing just looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really impressed with the color separation on this. This is a master grade model, and not only is this a master grade, this is one of those master grades where they just pull out all the stops and give you everything you could possibly want on the model. My favorite detail of this kit is probably just the sheer number of yellow thruster inserts there are here. Literally every thruster, even down to the tiniest little directional thruster on the shoulders, on the back, backpack on the waist. They're all colored in correctly and it looks phenomenal. I can't say for sure but it looks like there's also some kind of silver coating on the thrusters in the backpack similar to what they did with the F91 2.0 and the Zeta or double Zeta Verka. If that's the case this kit is going to look fantastic even straight out of the box. There's also some interesting color separation on the legs where there appears to be a stripe of exposed frame running around the center of the armor. I'm not really sure what's up with that. It's definitely not something I remember from the Gundam Alex. However, this model does seem to be taking a lot of liberties with the design, so maybe that's just another new addition. The color separation on this kit really does look absolutely amazing, but if I have to be a whiny a-hole for just a second, I am going to call out the fact that the gun for this kit is literally just entirely gray. I mean, come on. With the amount of color separation this kit has, they could have done something with the gun. I mean, they clearly don't care about anime accuracy here. They're doing all sorts of stuff to make it look well, cooler than it did in the OVA. So I think a little bit of color separation in the gun would have been nice, especially since the gun isn't really canonical anyway, since I don't think the Alex ever actually used the rifle or the shield or the bazooka, which I didn't even know it had until this kit. So if they threw a little extra color separation in the rifle, I think it would have gone a long way. But that's really just a very minor complaint on what looks to be an absolutely incredible model otherwise. Now I did mention the bazooka earlier, and like I said, this is not something I knew the Gundam Alex had at all. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen it before these pictures. Um, but the color separation here, unlike the rifle, looks fantastic. Lots of gray, lots of white, it's broken up nicely, and there's even a little bit of green for the scope. It's also a very unique bazooka. I don't think I've ever seen another Gundam that had a bazooka exactly like this. They're also doing something really cool with the elbows on this kit, where there's a rotation at both the top and the bottom of the joint, meaning you can bend the elbow with the blue part of the arm, either on the outside of the arm or on the underside. And since there's a little bit of dispute as to which is the more accurate way to bend the arm, I personally don't know which. I've seen it a lot with the, uh, with the blue part on the underside, but maybe it's supposed to go on the outside. Either way, this lets you do it both ways, so whichever way you prefer, whichever works for whatever pose you want the Alex in, you can get away with it just fine. You do get an alternate damage V-fin, which is pretty nice because while this is something that would be pretty easy to make yourself, it would require you to, you know, actually break the kit's V-fin, but this gives you the option to display it both ways. It appears like the forearm Gatling guns also have that same silver finish that we saw on the back thrusters, and the shield has this really wild gimmick where you can pretty much explode the shield apart and that exposes an area for the forearm guns to pop up through the shield. I think it looks a little silly. I'm not a huge fan of it from a design standpoint. I think it's kind of hard to look at. It gives me a little bit of a headache trying to figure out what's going on here. But from a functional standpoint, it is really cool that they worked in a way to make the guns work with the shield. And they really seem to be showing off in like every single picture set of this kit that there is a full inner frame for the Chobom armor itself. I don't really know why they did it, and I think it's a little odd that they're advertising as heavily as they are, but I guess it's kind of cool. And when it comes to the extra armor itself, there is some really cool stuff built in here, namely quite a few opening hatches. There's some flaps in the shoulders that open up for no apparent reason. Maybe something connects in there, I don't really know. There's a chest flap that opens up so you can get to the cockpit, and there's also flaps on the arm armor that lift up so you can still access the Gatling guns. And to top it all off, just in case there wasn't enough cool stuff going on with this kit, they actually give you extra armor that goes over the face and head of the Gundam Alex and adds some really cool new Vulcans. Now this was definitely not part of the OVA, but it looks awesome. Clearly there was a lot of love put into this kit. Somebody who worked on designing this really liked War in the Pocket, they got their opportunity to make their favorite Gundam shine, and it just looks phenomenal. Next, we have the high-resolution Estrella Noir. Now, I'm not 
a huge fan of the high res astray design so i'm not going to be going over this very much but it is definitely a very cool kit just purely from a detail standpoint there's a lot going on with this design if you're a fan of really detailed complex kits this might be the one for you now it isn't technically a full model because of course it's high res model so you got that pre-built action figure inner frame you put the armor on but still if you just want like a really cool edgy complicated detailed looking kit might not be a bad choice. I still really don't like this guy's weapons though. The swords literally just being stuck onto the sides of the pistols look so dumb. It looks like someone literally just took a katana and duct taped to the side of an automatic pistol. I'm a really big fan of the silver bullet. It's pretty much one of my favorite HGUC kits. So I was of course really happy to hear this was getting a new kind of updated design for narrative. Here's some more pictures of the kit. It looks pretty great. I like the colors on this. Um, unfortunately, because it's a darker color plastic, there's probably gonna be some pretty bad nubs on this. That's just how it goes. You kinda gotta deal with it. This has the Unicorn Gundam Beam Magnum, and it has this really cool new gimmick where there's a whole bunch of arms stored in the backpack, and those arms can be used to replace the main arm because apparently this rifle is so powerful that it literally explodes the mobile suit's arm every time it fires it. He's also got some new sculpting in areas like the legs and the shoulders and the head. And in general, just a really cool update to the design. Now the HGCE Destiny Gundam Revive in Hainé's colors is actually a limited item. Now this is kind of new information about it, and from what I can tell, this is not going to be premium Bandai or exclusive to any kind of shop like that. It's just a kit that they're not going to be making as many copies of. Think of it like something like the, some of those like titanium finish or extra finish master grades where they're technically released at retail and you can get them at retail, but they aren't, you know, constantly reprinting them every single month. Just because it's something that probably not a lot of people are going to be super into. I, however, am going to be very into it because I love everything about this kit. I'm super excited to get my own in hand, and I'm probably going to make at least a couple videos about it as soon as I get it. And this color scheme just looks awesome. I'm a big fan of the Creamsicle Destiny. Just a great looking kit. And even though it's a limited edition item, this is still probably going to be the easiest way to get the Destiny in these colors. So moving on to the Gundam Astray Gold Frame of Matsuhana. I think I've talked about this kit before. It's literally just a white palette swap of the Gold Frame Astray of Matsumina. I love that kit. I think it's super cool, but a lot of what I like about it is the black and gold color scheme and switching out for white and gold just doesn't do it for me. It's still a cool design, just not really my thing. So next up, we're gonna be looking at something that's so forgotten about that I honestly don't even know if I've ever mentioned on this channel before, and that is a pretty much just a recolor of the figureized Labo Fumina. Now this is basically a disassembled figurine. It's got like this weird kind of shading thing going on. They did some really crazy new molding techniques with this and it's actually really hard to get a hold of nowadays because they only did kind of a limited-ish production run of it. But they're doing a second release of it now and this time she has a black swimsuit instead of a yellow one. And apparently they've also reworked the design a little bit so the gate positions are even less noticeable. Now. That may be a mistranslation from the Dengeki Hobby site, but that's what I seem to be seeing so far. Now, I'm not really familiar with the original model, so I can't confirm if they've really changed the gate placement all that much, but looking at the snap-built images of it here, it does literally just look like an anime figurine. Like, I would not believe this was a model kit unless someone straight up told me it was. And now, finally, let's wrap up the news tonight with a look at the P-Bandai Maganak 2 packs. Now, of course, we got that big 36 pack that's gonna have just a stupid, crazy amount of Maganaks in it, but for the custom commander versions, they're doing them in smaller two packs. So let's start by looking at the Rashid and Abdul custom set. So I'm not going to pretend like I know which one of these is which. I'm just going to go through them. Um, so the first one's got these big shoulder pads. Looks pretty cool. He's got a machine gun arm apparently, which looks kind of awesome. And then the second guy's got a new head. Uh, looks like he's got some new legs as well. Very chunky legs. He's a thick boy. And I think he might have new shoulders as well. I think maybe the axe is new as well. I don't know, it's weird for me talking about these kits because I'm really not that familiar with the Maganak as a suit. So all this stuff's kind of new to me. It is kind of funny looking at this just basic ass high grade after drooling over the Alex 2.0 though and seeing all these thrusters that are uncolored. But hey, it's a high grade, they're cheap. That's kind of what you gotta expect. Okay, it looks like the big shoulder ones actually got some new legs too, I think. Unless the Maganak just has really thick legs that I completely forgot about. Oh, the shoulders look really neat from the back. They've actually got these kind of flaps that come down. Okay, I don't got much else to say about these. I'm just gonna move on to the other pack. Okay, so this is the Maganak Adua Custom and a Mod Custom. So 
This one's actually pretty cool. He's got this big murder claw on his hand. He's got a whole new arm piece. It looks pretty awesome. I'm pretty sure the shoulder pads are new as well. And then the other suit's got a new head, new shoulders. Kind of looks like it's wearing a little hat. Pretty cool design. I would say if I was to choose a favorite out of all the Maganac designs, it would probably be this one. So there you go, guys. Just a quick little look at some of the cool new kits we got upcoming, mostly focusing on the Gundam Alex 2.0, just because that kit looks so awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like if you did. Subscribe for more Gunpla and Gundam content. And as always, I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.